Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we'll be talking about the Fast Fourier Transform. If you missed the last video, it was a bit of a primer introduction on time series signals and the Fourier Transform. So if you missed that, definitely check that out. Uh, and stay tuned for the next video, which will kind of extend this idea to a thing called wavelets in the Wavelet Transform. So let's get right into it. All right, so in the last video, we were looking at the Fourier Transform. So if you give it some function in terms of time or space, it'll spit out a function uh, in terms of frequency or wave number. But most of the time, we don't know a functional form of anything we're dealing with in the real world. So that's where this idea of the discrete Fourier Transform is very useful. Like we were looking at in the previous video, you can have an audio signal. So you're playing your favorite record, you record it with a microphone, and then you can kind of digitize it uh, so you have it in a form that your computer can understand. Um, and just how you can digitize your audio signal, you can discretize your Fourier transform. So basically you convert your infinite integral to a sum over n uh, elements. So let's take a closer look at this expression. So we have f of f sub k is equal to the sum over 0 to big N minus 1 uh, with x sub n times e to the minus 2 pi i k n over big N. So we can define this term, uh, let's call it big R sub k n, and then we'll set that equal to e to the minus 2 pi i k n uh, divided by big N. So we can rewrite our sum in terms of these two elements, and then just so we're all on the same page, uh, f sub k is an element of what I'll call a column vector. Um, x sub n is an element of a column vector. And then r sub k n is an element of a matrix. So because of the nice properties of matrix multiplication, it turns out we can write our sum equivalently as matrix multiplication. So that's nice. Discrete Fourier transform is just matrix multiplication. Uh, but so what? How does this help us? If we're coming to code this whole thing up, we're still going to naively need two for loops to do this uh, double sum. This is what they call um, n squared time. So that means the uh, time complexity of this uh, operation will take n squared. So if you have n elements, you're going to have to do n squared computations. So we converted our discrete Fourier transform to matrix multiplication didn't seem entirely useful, but let's just consider a concrete example. So let's assume the case where big N equals big K, so big N is the size of our column vector where X sub N was an element of, and big K is the length of the column vector where F of K is an element of that. Uh, so we recall that big R sub KN is equal to E to the 2 pi I KN over big N, uh, and then we can just plug it in. So we can plug in uh, k and n, which will correspond to the indices of our matrix, and then big N is equal to 4. So we plug in those values, and we get this matrix on the right here. Lots of 1s, lots of minus 1s, lots of i's and minus i's, and just looking at it, uh, this matrix is symmetric, which means that if you were to swap the rows and columns, it would be the same ma matrix as you started with. So that's pretty nice. Um, and then this is a special element in the matrix. Um, so this element kind of defines the resolution of the discrete Fourier transform. So we can call it something special like K0, and then we can write our, any Fourier matrix in terms of this K0. And so this is for the 4x4 four four case that we have here. And then we can write a few more examples. So we have the 8x8 eight eight case, which uh, looks like that big a scary matrix in the top there, um, where K0 is defined on the right-hand side here. Uh, we have the 4x4 four four case, which is the same thing as before, and then we have the 2x2 two two case, uh, and then again, K0 is defined as e to the minus 2 pi i over big N. And this extends to any Fourier matrix of any size, uh, where N, uh, where your Fourier matrix has to be square, and N gives you the dimensionality uh, of that square matrix. So this is the trick. So we had the n squared. There was a lot of symmetry in our Fourier matrices. We saw it was a symmetric matrix. There were a lot of redundant terms, a lot of ones, a lot of minus ones, a lot of i's, minus i's uh, in the 2x2 two two case, the 4x4 four four case, the 8x8 eight eight case. Um, 
So it would be really nice if we could leverage this redundancy and symmetry to make our uh, algorithm a bit more efficient. And that's exactly the idea behind the fast Fourier transform. So it's just a fast way of computing the discrete Fourier transform. And the basic idea is given by this expression. So R sub n is our n by n Fourier matrix, any Fourier matrix you want, that's n by n, um, with the added caveat that n is a power of 2. That's an important point. Um, and then it turns out you can write any Fourier matrix uh, that's n by n by this expression here. I can define these terms individually, but I think it's better to just look at a concrete example. So again, let's look, return to our 4 by 4 case. Uh, so here uh, we have i sub big N over 2. So big N is 4, so we're looking at i sub 2. And that's just our 2 by 2 identity matrix. Uh, then we have d sub 2 which will be the first two diagonal elements of the 4 by 4 Fourier matrix. So we have uh, 1 and minus i, respectively. And it's a, d is defined to be a diagonal matrix, so we only keep the diagonal terms from the, Fourier, the 4 by 4 Fourier matrix, and we set everything else to 0. And then finally, we have the 2 by 2 Fourier matrix, which I flashed on the previous slide, um, but it turns out to be this. And then the last thing is we have this permutation matrix, which is defined uh, by this expression on the right here. Uh, so basically, you if you have a permutation matrix and you multiply it, uh, some vector by it, it'll just reshuffle the elements in your vector such that the even indexed elements are in the top half and the odd indexed elements are in the bottom half. Okay, so it just plug and chug. So we're just plugging in the 2x2 uh, two two identity matrix, the 2x2 two two diagonal matrix, and these slots here, we plug in the 2x2 two two Fourier matrix here and here, and then we have our 4x4 four four permutation matrix. So it's just we're just plugging into this expression. Um, and it may not be immediately obvious, but one thing that is promising is that these matrix have a lot of zeros in them, uh, which is good. We like zeros because that means there's no multiplication to do. So on the left-hand side, again, the time complexity is n squared. Uh, but it turns out, on the right-hand side, we don't have n squared time complexity. Uh, so let's take a closer look. This permutation matrix is basically free. So if you represent your data in a smart way, in a nice data structure, and use a good algorithm, you can basically do this in one step. Um, for this first matrix, half of it is just an identity matrix, basically. Uh, and then the other half is two diagonal matrices stacked on top of each other. Uh, so that means half the elements, uh, so in this case, four of the elements are zero. So that means there are only four non-trivial terms we have to worry about. So uh, that's where this uh, time complexity of order n comes from. And then for this middle matrix, half the elements are zero. So there's only um, two n or eight elements that we have to worry about. Uh, so it turns out, as n gets larger and larger, this gives you, uh, you can devise an algorithm that has n log n time complexity. Uh, so the fast Fourier transform is just efficient matrix multiplication. And so, you know, it might not be immediately obvious why this is order n log n, but I want to give you some uh, intuition of what's going on here. So let's look at another example. We have the 16 by 16 Fourier matrix which is given, we're just plugging into the expression that I showed on the previous slide. Uh, but there's nothing stopping us from playing the same game for the 8x8 eight eight Fourier matrix in this middle matrix right here. So we can plug that in, uh, and then we get a whole bunch more zeros. Again, we go from uh, n squared uh, time complexity to order n time complexity plus order 2n time complexity plus constant time complexity. Um, and then we have the 4x4 four four Fourier matrix here. So we plug that in and we pick up even more zeros. So this is kind of the intuition of what's going on. We just recursively uh, apply this matrix multiplication. We rewrite our um, kind of n by n Fourier matrix in terms of the n over 2 by n over 2 Fourier matrix and some other terms. And we get the n log n time complexity. Let's try to bring everything together with a concrete example. Uh, so I wrote this example in MATLAB. Uh, the code is available at the GitHub page linked here, 
end in the description. So we're going to look at the spectrum of an audio signal. So in this case, I'm just playing the low E string on an electric guitar, so we can see what that looks like. Uh, the first step is we read in our audio file, then in one line of code in MATLAB, we can apply the fast Fourier transform. Uh, here we're just defining some terms, we're getting the length of the audio signal, we're converting our frequency indices to actual frequency values, uh, we're computing the uh, two-sided and then from the two-sided, the one-sided power spectrum in these lines here, and then we just plot everything. So at the top we have our audio signal, and then the bottom we have our Fourier transform. Uh, so you see we have these kind of discrete peaks at different frequencies. So the first one is E2, the low E string, 82 hertz. So that's what we expected. Uh, but the cool thing is uh, we're getting exactly or approximately the harmonic series. So you're just getting integer multiples of the fundamental. So the fundamental frequency in this case is 82, 82 hertz. Um, and then we're just getting integer multiples of it. So we start with 82, 164, 247, 330, 415, and so on. And, um, you know, as someone that is into both physics and music, it's really nice when those two fields come together. Um, and if you keep going down the harmonic series, it turns out you approximately get a major scale, which is pretty cool. Uh, for the physics and slash music uh, personalities that exist inside my brain. So that was the Fast Fourier Transform. If you found this video helpful, like, subscribe, comment. I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, stay tuned for the next video, which will extend this idea to a thing called wavelets in the Wavelet Transform. Thanks for watching.